What's up guys, Anton here, and I'm recording this on January 3rd, 2022. So the start of a new year, and hopefully for you, that means new goals. What do you want to achieve? So that's what it means for me. I have sets of goals that we set out in the business. I have family goals that every year my wife and I sit down and write out together. And then I have my personal goals as well. And what I wanna do in this quick episode is just share some things that go into how I plan them and how I'm able, you know, luckily to achieve most of them. And I've realized after coaching 10,000 plus students in dropship lifestyle that this is something that people might need some help with. So not gonna pretend to be some productivity wizard or some master planner, but I will share things that I think are universal that have definitely helped me not only reach my goals, but set them with purpose and with meaning. So three things I wrote down that I wanna share, again, that will hopefully help you to make sure you get what you want out of this new year. So the first one you've probably heard before, but it's worth reiterating, and that is you should only have one goal that you're moving towards. You might be thinking, Anton, you just said you set business goals and family goals and personal goals. Yeah, that's true. They're not overlapping. They're separate for different parts of life. When I say you should focus on one goal, I mean per thing you're focusing on. For example, again, your family or your personal life and your business. Let's just choose business for this example. And why this is so important is because I'm guilty of this myself. Sometimes we have all these ideas and all these things that we want to implement. We'll sit down at the end of a year or at the beginning of the next, and we'll write down all of these things that we want to accomplish and all of these goals. The problem with that is some of them might not even be good ideas to begin with. Some of them might be far-fetched and in combination, it might just be too much to ever get done. So even if you check off, let's say five out of 10 things by the end of the year, you still haven't reached your goals and most likely you've wasted time that could have been put into something else that would generate far better results. So my process here for picking that one singular goal that if we hit as a company or maybe if you hit, if you're a solopreneur, you know you've won one, you know you've reached that, you know you've checked it off, you know you have succeeded. So what I like to do here is write down all of those, call them mini goals, and then I try to distill what the main thing is that I want out of them. So how can I take the different things that I want to accomplish and turn them in to that key objective? What is that one thing? Usually it's a number that we're focusing on. And if that number is hit, then the team knows that is hit, I know it's hit, and we know we have won. So all of those other things that maybe you've written down as you were brainstorming, it's possible that they go into impacting and getting that one goal to be reached. But if you miss some of them, it doesn't matter because all you're focusing on is that one big goal. Again, many little things can go towards helping that, but you should identify that one thing that if it's hit, you win. And again, I know that's not a new concept. I think people are familiar with choosing one thing to focus on. I think what the problem is and what might scare some people is they know if they have this one goal and they don't reach it, then they failed, right? If you have a bunch of different things you have on your goal list, you get some of them. You could be like, well, at least I accomplished X, Y, and Z. But if you don't accomplish your one singular goal, then it feels like a failure. So that brings us into the second thing that I wanted to talk about that hopefully will alleviate some of that fear. And that is recognizing your weaknesses. So whatever that goal is, maybe you think, okay, you know what? It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be a stretch, but I put together a plan for myself. I'm gonna make it happen. And you start going towards it. Let's just say a month or two months or three months goes by and you don't see the progress being made. It's very important that you're self-aware enough to recognize why it's not happening, what weaknesses are not letting that goal be reached, and how can you then take responsibility and plug those holes, right? How can you make things happen when they're not on pace to? This might be something like if it's a business goal, maybe joining a mastermind or finding people to meet up with in person to discuss problems and get ideas from them. This might be, you know, I hate recommending this, but possibly getting a business partner that can help in areas where you can't get things done. Maybe this is outsourcing. Maybe this is bringing on a virtual assistant to help you, but you need to recognize these weaknesses sooner rather than later. And if they're just something that you don't see changing anytime soon, find ways to fix it sooner rather than later, or else the year will keep going and and the weaknesses will still exist and that one goal won't be reached. So if you make it a point to identify these things sooner rather than later, there's plenty of time to course correct. There's plenty of time for that one goal to be reached. I'll just give you a quick personal example for me. Last year, I had a fitness goal in terms
terms of strength. And I thought, okay, what I'm gonna do to make this so easy on myself is buy a, uh, a home exercise machine. So I bought this thing called a Tonal. I love it. It's like, it has a TV screen on it. It gets installed on the wall. It has all these exercises, tons of weights, classes to follow. And for about maybe three weeks, I used it almost every day. And then I just didn't want to use it anymore. And it wasn't because it's not an amazing piece of technology. It is. But I just realized that if I'm at home, I don't want to do that. You know, I have my family at home. I have lots of fun things to do at home. And that's not one that I want to do. Also, just being by myself in my office where I have it installed, eh, not what I want to do. So what did I do? Did I just give up? No, I recognized a weakness is if I'm in my house and I have this thing next to me, I'm most likely not going to be using it as often as I should. So what did I do? I joined a gym that has group classes where I like being around other people, where it's motivating, where it's fun, where it's something different to get me out of the mold and get me to work out to get towards that strength goal. And now I'm in a place where I am definitely moving the right direction. I course corrected. I recognized the weaknesses. I didn't just give up. I found a solution. And that's what I encourage you to do no matter where in life or business you find yourself deviating from the path you want to be on. And this brings us to the third and final point that I want to cover. And this one I see far too often with people I help inside of Dropship Lifestyle, again, in my coaching program. And it's that they try something, they try it, they try it. Maybe it's working, maybe it's not working, maybe it's not to where they think it should be. And then they start over and they try something else. And they work a little bit and they see similar results or maybe they don't see any results and they start over again. And they do something and they start over and they do something and they start over. And their year looks like this. It goes up, it goes down. Down. It goes up, it goes down. There's never any consistency. There's never any growth. What you need to do is stop starting over. If you suffer from this, if you find yourself trying different things to reach your goal, but you're constantly trying new things and it's this repetitive cycle, you're not going to reach your goals. Again, there is an opportunity to course correct, but by far the thing that's going to get you the most success is having that goal, having a plan of action, and continuing on your path to that goal through the same vehicle, whatever that that may be, whatever's gonna get you there. What's not gonna work is you try, let's say in drop shipping, you decide you're gonna get into e-commerce and you wanna sell stand-up desks and you build a stand-up desk store and maybe you get approved with only five brands to sell for and you think that's not enough. Anton says I should find at least 20. Now I'm gonna build a new store and I'm gonna sell curtains, right? And you build a curtain store and then you get 20 suppliers, but you see your traffic is low for the first two months and you say, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to build a store and sell wine refrigerators. And you do that and you make a little bit more money, but then you think, you know what? I think there's a really good opportunity in selling rims for cars. I'm going to build a store in that instead. If you're doing that cycle over and over, you're not going to win. Meanwhile, the guy or girl that had a goal set and let's say they used stand-up desks as what they were going to sell, they had a few rocky months to start with. If they stuck with it over time, over that year, it's going to keep going going up. It's not going to be up, down, up, down, up, down, and end the year, you know, at a low level or at nothing. So keep that in mind. Stop starting over. If you recognize these things soon enough and you course correct along the way, you should have absolutely no problem having an amazing 2022, which of course is all I want for you. So stay healthy, stay safe, have a great year. If you are not subscribed to this channel yet, click the button because we have two new episodes every single week. Most of them are more in tactical things you can use to build your wealth. So click that button and I'll see you on Thursday with the next one.